31, the second to last chapter here. So, so close. Um, so we get a few <laughs> loose ends here with adjectives and adverbs. So first it is looking at comparative adjectives. And the main thing that's pointed out here is that, uh, so you have normal adjectives like kalos or iskros, and then the comparative, you'll usually see teros, terra, teron added to the end. And that is translated as or, or, er, um, so strong, stronger, um, so down here. So hiskuros means strong. Hiskuroteros means stronger. And then the superlative uses tatos or tate tato. Um, that's hiskurotatos. It means strongest. So strong, stronger, strongest. So teros meaning er, tatos meaning est. Uh, and then third declension is eon. Um, endings and istos. Okay, then, uh, oh, it points out that there's some words, um, have irregular, they, they don't follow like the strong, stronger, strongest. Um, but here, like great, greater, greatest uses megas, meson, megistos. So there, there's some examples like that, uh, that you'll just, they're in your vocab. So you'll just have to memorize. If you, if you just do your vocab, um, you will know those words. So just know that there's some irregular that don't follow the pattern. Here it gives you the, the forms of uh, pleon, which are the same as kraton and meson. Um, which they're just third declension endings. So you don't have to learn any new endings there. Okay. And then it, it talks about that, that there's two ways to to express a comparison. So in English, we use the word than. So here, the grace of God is greater, we would say, than the power of sin. But here in Greek, you can just use the genitive to, to translate than, or you can use a. So um, the one pursuing righteousness is greater. And then here we have than the one pursuing glory. So two ways to translate than in, in terms of like a comparison you can use the genitive or you can use a. Okay. There are many adverbs uh, it's pointed out here that are formed from adjectives. And so kalos means good, where kalos <laughs> with the omega sigma uh, means well. And so in, in English, we have ly. Um, so like quick is an adjective that is a quick guy, um, versus quickly is an adverb. The, that guy is running quickly. So in Greek, Omega Sigma is kind of like the L Y in Greek. So, uh, heteros means different. I, I, the problem with Greek <laughs> is, uh, the Omicron Sigma and Omega Sigma sound the same. So I, I'm like saying them and then it, there's not really a difference in pronunciation. Um, but so Omega Sigma heteros is, uh, differently. Um, so Omega Sigma is kind of the L Y it, of, of Greek. It, uh, makes an adverb out of an adjective. All right. And this paragraph, you can just overlook. That's not as important. Okay. Uh, number 20, uh, 228 talks about you in Greek, you can bend questions, uh, whether 
the answer expects a yes or a no. So if you if you're asking a question expecting a no answer, you use may. But if you're expecting a yes answer, you use ooh. Okay, so here, you all did not eat the bread of children, right? Uh, and the expectation there is no. Did you did you eat the bread of children? No is the answer. Um, versus here, we have that woman. Is is that woman the mother of the king? And since we have uh, ook here, we would say yes, yes, she is. Um, sometimes I find it, I, I found it hard to, how do you translate these into English? And the, a helpful thing, if you're expecting a no answer, what you can do is make a statement in the negative. So here, you didn't eat the children's bread. And then like, uh, add in, did you or write or something like that? Versus if you're expecting a yes answer, make a statement in the affirmative or like a, just a positive statement. So here, that woman is the mother of the king, isn't she? Okay. And that expects a yes in English. So if I wanted to make this negative, I would say that woman isn't the mother of the king, is she? Right. That woman isn't. Make it negative. And then that expects a no answer versus if you make it positive. That woman is the mother of the king, right? That expects a positive. So that might help you uh, translate these. Okay, then the last, last thing that they add in here is the contrary to fact conditions. And I'm just gonna go to the examples here. So these use a uh, past tense in the protasis, um, sometimes negated with a may. And then it has an on in the apotesis or in the then part of it. Um, and so basically you translate with this would in there. That's going to be the, the main thing here. So if, if that woman were dead, we have this on, which makes it kind of like a subjunctive idea. If that woman were dead, she would not have um be walking it around in the village versus here this is a negative example um if this man uh did not love another one or had not loved another woman we have the on here his wife would not have crucified him so the key here is the on which we're used to seeing with subjunctive alerts you to kind of a subjunctive type of meaning and you would add would into your translation. Help out with that. Okay.